male versus female pelvis, okay? This is female, and this is male. Okay, the first thing you wanna notice is that this isn't standing up off the table as tall as this is. This is deeper, this is more shallow. So that's why in your table, in Practicum 2 Study Guide, one of the prompts is depth. Oops, more shallow or less deep. More deep or less shallow, okay? These bones are thinner than these bones because these bones bear less weight than these bones. Okay. Acetabulum, acetabulum. Oh, those are different. Okay. This acetabulum is not as wide as this. This acetabulum is not as deep as this. Again, because this bears more weight than this. Okay. Pelvic arch. Pelvic arch. This angle in the male is acute, less than 45 degrees. And this angle in the female is slightly obtuse, just a little bit wider than 45 degrees. Okay. Personally, that's my go-to. I can tell right away, male from female, because of that huge difference. Let's see, what else did I give you? Width of sacrum, right, didn't I? I think I did. Although you really can't tell in these specimens, which is a shame. Um, in the female, the sacrum is on average wider, and in the male, the sacrum is on average um, more narrow, narrower. Is that a word? I think that's a word. Um, in the female, the coccyx is more movable, and in the male, it's more fixed, despite what the model's doing right now. <laughs> okay, that's because um, the only things that have to come through here, through the outlet, the pelvic outlet, are feces, semen, urine. Whereas through this outlet, feces, urine, um, menstrual discharge, sure, but a baby, okay? And I'm going to freak you out a little bit by grabbing a baby. I'll make you go with me. This is part of an infant's skull. Part of an infant's skull. Okay. And if baby drops and is aligned and isn't breached and everything's just fantastic, then baby's skull at delivery. Oh, there's baby. Okay will be oriented like this. Okay. Um, how come it doesn't... Wow. <laughs> Do you see the problem? Wow. Okay. So baby's got a really tuck down chin to te uh, chest. Mama's pelvis... Oh, God, don't fall. <laughs> Mama's pelvis has to be really loosey-goosey. Okay. And the pubic symphysis is going to be extra, it's going to have a lot of extra give to it once we get to um, full term, okay, to really let that spread as much as possible, which is not much. <laughs> okay, where were we? Movable, uh, we did it. Okay, curvature. Uh, this coccyx is more straight, straight, whereas this coccyx, because there's no baby that has to go through there, and I'm just going to simulate that in the model, is more curved. Baby doesn't have to go through there. Okay, what else did I give you? Shape of pelvic inlet. The inlet 
This is the flip side. And the flip side. Okay. And it's kind of hard to tell right now, but because of the spine. Here, I'll flip it. Because of the spine. It's pretty much a heart shape. The inlet, not the outlet. That's the outlet. Inlet. Okay. Whereas. Orient the female the same way. The inlet, not the outlet, the inlet, it's a little more flat and oval shaped. See that? Okay. And then what else did I give you? Oh, okay, the, the shape of the pelvic outlet. Okay, personally, Mickey Mouse. Does it? Mickey Mouse on a on a dangerous diet. <laughs> Mickey, you gotta eat some. Sandwiches are good. Okay. Uh this is also lighter, obviously, than that. But that's why Mickey looks so uh, slim. And that's actually all I gave you for the, the male versus female. Okay, so hopefully that helps.